Okay, hey everyone and welcome to a brand new Class 66 Rocks locomotive review. Now, this review is really something quite special. Um, it not only commemorates my channel being on YouTube for six years now, so the vid this video is like the six year one. Um, I had to look at my video dates the other night just to see where I was up to with them. And the last one I did was back in February 2016, which was the five year special. So February 2017 marks six years now of me being on YouTube. Now, back in 2016, you may remember that I went to see a very famous locomotive at the Crew Heritage Centre in Cheshire. Now, that particular locomotive was the Flying Scotsman, which you may have seen. I did a video and I also did some photos. Now, in December, I attended Worley, the National Railway Exhibition Show, and I purchased a particular set which was a gift from my parents actually, for my, one of my Christmas presents, but we purchased it while we were there. So I couldn't review it until after Christmas, and with having university work and whatnot, I just didn't get round to doing it during the Christmas period. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the set um, and you'll soon see why it is quite special any minute now okay so let's get on with this review then so as you can see today as i slowly bring the box into view we are taking a look at the locomotion flying scotsman and support coach train pack and i am absolutely thrilled with this it is so so outstanding, the details just excellent, the locomotive it's absolutely gorgeous, um, I, I cannot fault this set, I mean I haven't run it on the layout yet um, because it's been that cold recently, we've not done much at the layout but we're going to be doing it once the weather begins to warm up, um, so in the meantime I'm doing sets and other locomotives that I've got just till we get back into the loft and then I will do another layout update video to show you where we're at. Okay, so as you can see, it's the National Collection in miniature. It's by Locomotion, which is the National Railway Museum at Shildon, as you can see just there. So we can see it is by Hornby. Um, so the model is produced by them, the train and the coach. Um, it's Item number R3503, BR, NRM, Flying Scotsman and Support Coach. It's a limited edition. Um, it's in a double O gauge. And as you can see there, we have the National Railway Museum logo. Now this set cost, I think it was about £234. Um, but obviously it's one that I wanted, so my parents purchased it for me. Um, so this was my Christmas present actually. So let's take a look at the rest of the box first. So as you can see, again on the side we have the item number and a description. And we also have a few images of what the Flying Scotsman model looks like. So as you can see, it looks like we've got a super detailed model inside this box. I mean, I've opened it to have a look, so it's not the first time that I've opened the box by all means. So as you can see on the back there, well on the sides rather should I say, I've got the photo of the loco and the coach coupled up to each other. So if we just take a look at the back of the box now. Okay so as you can see we've got a lot of detailed information about the Flying Scotsman. So we also have information about locomotion as well so if I just show you some information here um, I don't think the camera was going to pick all this up um, so I'll just try and hold it the best I can so you can try and read it I mean there's been that many shows and that many books produced about the Flying Scotsman um, and the few famous owners that he's had um, like Alan is it Pegler yeah Alan Pegler um, and then Pete Waterman, I mean there's been quite a few actually. And I have got a, another review coming up which details that information 
um, a bit more further so I will be doing that at some point so as you can see there's some information there and it says the profit generated from the sale of this model will go to the museum so as you can see we also have the, the opening times for locomotion as you can see during the summer time it's open 10 till 5 and during Greenwich Mean Time it's open from 10 till 4. Okay, so let's get this stunning locomotive open and take a look at what's inside this box. So I'll, oh, there we go, I knew I'd opened it one end. Okay, so we'll slowly slide the box off. Okay, so before I show you the box, we'll just have a look at this limited edition certificate that's just fell out. So this certifies that this model is number 34 of 500. So I think it's quite sought after this set as well, because once it came out, it was selling like wildfire. I mean, I went on to the Locomotion website in the hopes that I'd maybe be able to purchase stuff there, but they were out of stock. So, I'm really glad I did see this at Worley. So, yeah, that's a limited edition certificate. Okay, so let's take a look at the locomotive itself then. So, what we'll do, we'll just take this off here. And I'll just place it down for a moment. While we take a look at the instructions, so as you can see, it's a class A3 steam locomotive and tender. Um, they come in DCC ready, DCC fitted, and with DCC sound. Now, this one is just DCC ready, so we've got to put a Hornby 8 pin decoder into it. So, the standard Hornby instructions, as you can see, where to lubricate it, how to remove the body. Um, how to fit couplings, etc. Now to put decoders in. So that's that. Um, how to remove and replace the coal, which is a new one, and a bit of information on the brake rods. So we'll keep hold of these um, because we're going to need them. So we'll just fold them up, put them to one side. Okay, so here we have it. The Stunning Flying Scotsman. Now it might look black, um, but it is actually green. Uh, I think it's just the lighting actually in the room where I'm filming um, because I'm in my living room at the minute. So as you can see, it's presented in a foam tray, um, and you know, we've got the local and the support coach in one box. So as you can see, we've also got some um, foam paper of sorts. Just protecting the locomotive um, and at the background at the minute I've just got a fly that keeps trying to land on the camcorder so I've just had to try and get rid of that while I'm trying to film as well okay so as you can see first we have some detailing parts if I just take these out of here uh, this has been put in well so I'll just place this down a minute okay so as you can see we have the detailing parts just there. I think those are some steam pipes actually. But just look at the detail in them. It is absolutely outstanding. Um, and we also have a spare wheel just there. So we'll just keep them to one side for a moment. And then this side we have some more parts. Now I'm not entirely sure what these are, um, but I'm sure it will say in the instructions once we've come to detailing it. So I'll put them to one side. Okay, so we will do the locomotive first. So I'm going to, have to be very, very, very careful here. So as you can see, we've got four finger holes on the back where we can put our fingers to get the locomotive out. So let's slowly take it out of the box and I think this is 
going to be one of them that takes a moment so I'll just try and push it out the best I can um, so we might just have to lift it by hand the rest of the way oh there we go it's coming it's coming but, but what I'm going to do I'm just going to place it down just for a moment um, because it is that delicate I seriously do not want to break this locomotive at all and it has been put in the box really really well okay so the locomotive is now out of the box so let's take a look at it so bringing the stunning flying Scotsman back into view now so as you can see it is an absolutely exquisite beautiful locomotive uh, um, apologies it took a while just getting it out of the box um, it was in, in quite tightly so at least it was secure so let's take a look at the front of the locomotive first now I think this tender is supposed to be con connected up somewhere but we'll have a look at that in a minute because I think it's a different type of tender than what we're usually used to okay so I'm going to try really really well here now to try and hold this locomotive in view okay so on the front of the locomotive as you can see oops we'll just try and have that bogey up a bit there okay we'll try it at that we have the locomotive number 60103 on the front now as you can see we've also got some smoke deflectors I think they are um, because I think the, was the A3 a streamline locomotive I'm not entirely sure but please leave your comments below if you do know because I know this locomotive was featured in a world speed attempt um, think to go as fast as it possibly could but like I say I've got a book that I will be reviewing on this um, at some point so there'll be more information in that so as you can see we've got sprung loaded buffers on the left and right hand sides which is absolutely fantastic um, we've also got some detailing that's already on so um, I'm just trying to see the shed code plate actually so if I try bringing that in to that uh, I think it says 34A or is it 24 so what I'll do I'll just take the locomotive out of the camera view just for a moment while I have a look at that okay so we were right the shed code plate is 34A now I'm not entirely sure which 34A is but if you do know please leave your comments below okay so I'll just bring the loco back into view again so as you can see it's in a gloss finish hence the shine so if we hold it to the light and um, you can clearly see it's sort of shining um, I know Hornby have done a matte version of this as well, but because I had seen the support coach and the loco in crew, I thought I'm going to have the gloss finish, and, and so I decided on this one. So, taking a look at the locomotive from the side now, as you can see, we have the wheels just down here, as well as the front bogey, which has four wheels on the front. But as you can see, just looking at it, the amount of detail that's gone into this locomotive is absolutely outstanding. So you've got your speedo cable just there, and we have the stunning Flying Scotsman nameplate just there. And after seeing this locomotive in real life, um, I just had to have this. Um, I don't think anything would have stopped me, apart from the cost, but I would have pre-saved for it if I hadn't had it at Christmas. Okay, so moving along now, you can see we have the locomotive number again, 60103 rather, apologies there, and we also have a 
um, plate just there that says Doncaster on, if you can just about see that. Um, and we also have RA9 at the bottom just there. So Doncaster, I'm guessing, is where the locomotive was built. Um, Doncaster Works, which is actually quite a famous works, to be fair. Um, so there's quite a few locomotives built there over the years. So let's take a look at the locomotive from the inside now. So as you can see, just looking at the inside of that loco there, I mean, just look at the detail that's in that. From the steam pipes to the valves. I mean, we've even got the coal box there. That stands out. And um, we've got all the dials and whatnot in the top corner just there. But it's absolutely outstanding. And Hornby have done a fantastic job with this model for locomotion. So moving along to the tender now. So as you can see, um, usually the tenders have a hook that they clip into but this one is a bit different it's the first of its kind that I've actually purchased it's like screwed in on the loco with a small little oval sized bracket um, with a screw into the tender just there as well as the plug that connects the main bit of the locomotive to the tender so that's something quite new so we'll just have to be careful when we're placing it on the track um, because we don't want to break that so as you can see on the tender it's a lake crest logo and we have four wheels either side on the tender as you can see the tender is also in gloss green and we've also got the coal just there um, I don't think it's real coal it's actually fake but some people do put real coal into here so that's probably what the instructions meant by replacement coal okay so turning the locomotive round to the back now so as we can see again we have sprung loaded buffers on the left and right hand side um, I'm trying very hard here to hold the loco and the tender um, in a level alignment um, so as you can see we've got some warning panels on the top left and right hand sides just there um, I think I don't know is that something to do with electrification I'm not entirely sure but please leave your comments below if you do know and you can also see we've got an NEM coupling pocket on the back which we will be leaving on because we're going to be pulling a rake of coaches with the flying Scotsman okay so now I'll just take the flying Scotsman out of view just for a moment um, while I turn it around to the other side like I say this new type of tender fastening um, is just a little bit different than what we used to so I'm just having to try and balance it a bit okay so bringing the locomotive back into view now so as you can see on the other side again we've got the British Railways Lake Crest logo moving along you can see we've got an open window just there um, now, I'm not too sure if these open and close, but I'm not even attempting to try because I don't want to break the loco in any way. But again, we've got the locomotive number, 60103, as well as the Doncaster Works nameplate on the loco just there. And we also have some more detailing just inside the tender area. Moving along now, as you can see again, we've got the outstanding detail and the Flying Scotsman name badge, as you can see. Like I say, Hornby have put quite a lot of effort into this locomotive and I am so impressed with it. Um, I'm lost for words actually. So as you can see, again we've got the wheel set and the bogies on the front just here. And we've also got a thin handrail, I think it is running the length of the locomotive. But that is so delicate you'd have to really be careful not to manage to snap that. Okay, so taking a look at the top of the loco now. So as you can see, um, we've got the funnel, is it, on the front. Um, it actually looks like a twin funnel, this one. Um, so whether all the A3s were like this, I'm not entirely sure. But if you do know, please leave your comments below. So as you can see, moving across, we've got the whistle just there. 
and you can see it's in a gloss black finish as well on the cab roof. So that is the Flying Scotsman A3 locomotive. So let's just put this down for a minute and let's take a look at the support coach. Okay, so bringing the box back into view now. As you can see, we've only got the support coach left, so hopefully this will come out a bit easier, and it has. So we'll put the box back down for a moment. Okay, so this is the support coach that runs behind the Flying Scotsman. It's really quite lightweight, it's nothing like the locomotive. The locomotive weighs quite a bit, but like I say, with the tender tie power it is and the connection from between the loco to the tender um, it was a bit hard to try and balance it in one hand so taking a look at the coach now so this is a I think it may be is it a Monsell or a Mark one but if you do know please leave your comments below so as you can see on the front of the coach here um, we've got some warning panels on the top left and right hand side um, unfortunately, we haven't got sprung loaded buffers, so good job this coach is going to be pulled um, because sometimes if you've got a local with sprung loaded buffers and some with the solid buffers like this one has, um, they tend to push themselves over each other. So they're oval buffers but they're not sprung and we've also got an NEM coupling pocket on the front. And as you can see we have the letter C1 just there as well as some other wording just down here. Turning the coach round to the side now, as you can see we have the bogies on the front and the back, so we've got four bogies on the front, four, oh no, four wheels on the front bogey, sorry, not four bogies, <laughs> and four wheels on the back bogey. As you can see we've got the words National Railway Museum just on the front just here. Now, they may look like a yellowish colour um, in the video, but actually it's, they're like a gold colour when I'm looking at it, so it must be the light um, making the colour just look a little bit different. So as you can see, we've got windows and doors running the length of the support coach. Um, I don't think it's a super detailed coach as such, um, but I think it's got some seats in. I mean, I know some of them have got tables as well these days, so as we can see, we have the number 99953 on the back of the coach just there. So turning the coach around now, as you can see again, it's similar to the front. We've got the warning panels on the left and right, right hand sides, as well as the oval buffers just there and the coupling pocket. Looking at the other side, we can see it is virtually the same. So you've got your windows and doors. Um, running the length of the coach in different places um, the coach number again and the words National Railway Museum so let's just quickly take a look at the roof so as you can see we have got a bit of detailing just there as you can see um, but like I say it's just the support coach so the coach wasn't as detailed like the locomotive was so that is it basically. A huge thank you for watching um, and I will hopefully be bringing you some more locomotive reviews very soon. But in the meantime, if you are interested in this set and I'm going to show you the box one last time, then it is available through Locomotion. So if they haven't got it in stock, my advice would be to email them. Um, and see if they can get hold of it for you. Um, failing that, take a look at eBay um, because sometimes you can pick them up on there. Um, but it is absolutely out of this world. It is outstanding. And I highly recommend it to any double O gauge model railway enthusiast as well as collectors. Um, you will not be disappointed. Thank you for watching.